not saying you got to run and run and and play the horse. I'm not saying that at all. That's not what I'm saying. But it, what I'm saying is it's an act of faith to release that new man. You know, I choose whether you feel like it or not. It's not based on your feelings. It's based on faith. You activate that new man, the grace of God on the inside of you by faith. Amen. Amen. And, then, and then, you know, you just you put on. You know, well, how do you do that? Then you just put on. You put on the new man. Praise the Lord. We're going to go to some passage of scripture here in a minute, but I want to read a few more of these. And, and, and this verse Philemon. Now, basic translation says, basically, it says that the faith which you have in in common with them may be working with power in the knowledge of every good thing which is in you in Christ. In Christ, power. That tells me that there's power in Christ. Ooh, come on, yeah. And when you begin to share your common faith, or when you begin to acknowledge, and that's not only when you're acknowledging with someone else, when you begin to confess the Word of God in your life. I like to say this, my pastor on time ago taught me uh, that your faith level never will never rise, your, your faith level only rises as high as your confession level. Thank you, Joshua. Come on. Let me say that again. Your faith level only rises as high as your confession level. <coughs> So when you're acknowledging every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus on a daily basis, and you're acknowledging that I'm a new creature in Christ. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I have been redeemed in Him. What are you not? A lot of people say, well, that's kind of, you know, isn't that self-righteous? You know? No, that's, what you're saying is, is that Christ has done it all. Amen. He paid it all. He's done it Come all. And I'm just yeah. going to confess what He says about it. A lot of people, really true humility is, is submitting to God's view and opinion of you. And God's view and opinion of you is that, hey, I've made you a new creature. You're a new creature. That's just Amen. all there is to it. You're a new creature. You're righteous. You're in right standing. And when you submit to that, and you confess that with your mouth, what are you doing? You're saying the same thing as God says Woo. about you about your situation. Amen. God wants you to say the same thing that He's saying about who you are or about your situation. If He says you're going over, then you need to say, I'm going over. Amen. I'm not going under. I'm going over. Amen. Come on. Praise the Lord. What did, what did Jesus tell him when He was out there in the boat with him? He said, get in the boat and we're going to the other side. And then right in the middle of the storm, all of a sudden they're all freaking out and they're all... You know, can, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, there's a, you know, there's a storm brewing, and there, Jesus is laying there with on a pillow asleep. Huh? He's laying there asleep. If windows are down, you might want to roll them up. He was laying there asleep, and they got all fearful, and they tried to wake him up. Master, don't you care about us? No, he already knew they were going to the other side. And then he wakes up, he says, he rebukes the storm, he says, oh, you have little faith. I'm just using that as an example. You know, that he said, we're going to the other side. He said, let's go to the, we're going to the other side. He said that. If they would have got an agreement with what he said, <laughs> wait a minute, Jesus already said we're going to the other side, so we're going to the other side. Amen. What would they have been doing? They would have been having the same identical confession. They would have been saying the same thing as God says. So we, we can get our Bible out and begin to say the same thing that God has said about us. That's called putting on the new man. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to let's go to uh, Ephesians. chapter uh, 4. We'll start at verse 22. Ephesians chapter 4. It says that you put off concerning the former conversation or the former lifestyle or the former life. When you see that word or that word conversation right there, that word that you put off the former life. The old man, he says, 
which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Doesn't that sound familiar? Romans 12, 2. It says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Uh, that's what he's saying right here. He's saying, He says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on. Huh. Tell me, you're going to have to put on. It says, You put on. God's already put on. Amen. He's already made you a new creature. He's already made you righteous. He's already redeemed you. Now He says you put on. Amen. That means you're, there's going to have to be some talking going on. There's going to have to be something going on here. It's like when you wake up in the morning. You know what do you do? You put on clothes. Amen. Huh? Yeah, I'm hoping you put on clothes. You go to your job or you go somewhere. You know, you put on some clothes. You know, please don't be... Anyway, praise the Lord. <laughs> So you put on some what? You put on some clothes. You put on some shoes. You put on, you know, you put on clothes. And that's what Paul, that's what that's what he's saying here. You, you get dressed. You know, get dressed. Put on. Praise the Lord. Let me give this to you. Let me read it to you out of a couple of different translations. That you may clothe yourself in the new humanity that has been created in God's image in a state of righteousness and holiness born of the truth. Put on. Put on that new man. That new man that's on the inside of you. Put him on right here. Think about Jesus when he had the crown of thorns on his head. Right? He had a crown of thorns on his head. That means Jesus paid your penalty for you, spirit, soul, and body. Right. That's right. And when you begin to put on and take the Word of God and put it on your mind, you say, Jesus, what you did for me, you paid it off. I'm going to put on right now. Sometimes you might just need to put on when you get up in the morning. You know, you Amen. might just get up in the morning, you know, that you're kind of tired, you know, but you just want you just you're not motivated. You ought to just start saying, thank you, Lord, that I'm redeemed. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that I've yeah. been, I've been set free. Thank you, Lord, yeah. hallelujah, that the Holy Spirit lives in me. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, that Jesus spilled his blood for me. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I, just, I get up in the morning and I plead the blood. Amen. Come on. I'm walking out the door. I plead the blood. I plead the blood over my life. <coughs> what am I doing? I'm putting on. I wake up in the mornings. Good morning, Holy Spirit. You're the, you have expertise and knowledge. I've come to receive from you. This Amen. Lord, Woo. I'm putting on. I get the word out. I, I confess the word. You know, Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. And I say, I do not lack for opportunity. I do not lack for ability. And I never lack for money. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's my confession. What am I doing? I'm putting on who I am. I'm putting on. You know, that you're putting on. That's what, you're, that's what you're doing. You're putting on this mind up here. Amen. Because your mind will want to go different directions. Okay. Praise the Lord. I mean, I know my mind. You know, there's things that will come on your mind that don't belong there. Amen. So you need to put something on. You know, put on that new creation. Put on that new man that's on that's created in righteousness and true holiness. You know, a lot of us were really trying to live a holy, separated life. You know, and we're trying to do it in our own strength. But if you begin to put on that I've already been created holy because God created me. And if He's holy, then He created me holy. And you begin to see yourself as already holy, you'll start living a more holy life than you try to do it yourself. Amen. Amen. That's right. It said right here that you've been created in righteousness and true holiness. That means that's already been done. And when you start saying that and you start putting that on, I've been created in, right, true, in righteousness and true holiness. I'm already holy. I've been created holy. Well, that's hard for the natural mind like parents. But man, you don't know what I did yesterday. That doesn't have anything to do, have any bearing with the, the, God, the way that God has created you. It has no bearing on what you did yesterday. It doesn't have any bearing on you being holy. Holy means set apart. God has made it said right here that He's created you in true holiness. That means He's already done it. And when you put that on, you'll start living more holy on accident than you did before. Amen. Amen. I know because I tried to live more, a more holy life than what I thought was living holy. 
But when I decided, when I started seeing in here that I've already been created and made holy, I started living more holy than I did when I was trying to do it myself. Amen. Because I took it out of my court and I realized I've already been made holy. Listen, God said, be you holy as I am holy. He wouldn't have told you to be holy if you couldn't be holy. That was an Old Testament scripture. Now He's created you in holiness. That's right. So now you can live holy because He's made you that way. And just because you have a bad thought, you know, I, I, you know, the devil has to come in and condemn you just because a bad thought rolls through your head. All of a sudden, you're in some kind of sin. Not every thought is your own. That's right. That's right. Not every thought is your own. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I know I am. Amen. Not every thought is your own. There's thoughts that'll come. Just don't let them nest there. Thoughts will fly over your head continually. Don't let them nest. Like a, it's like birds. Birds flying over. You know, don't let them nest on your head. Amen. Don't let those thoughts nest there. Take them captive. That's putting on. Amen. When the devil comes and tells you, yeah, but you know, I know that preacher said you were created holy, but you sure aren't living a holy lifestyle. You aren't living righteous. You know what you can do? Now that you've got ammunition, you know what? I am the righteousness of God. I don't have to try to be righteous. God's already created to be righteous. Amen. Come on. Yeah, Come on. remember what you did yesterday. Yeah, but guess what? I've already went to the Lord with that. That's already, that's already been erased. Amen. It's, Amen. it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. I mean, you got to talk back. I mean, the devil does a lot of talking. If you ain't talking back to him, he'll just run you right into the ground. Amen. Amen. Come on. That's what he's doing with people now because they don't understand their identity in Christ. And so he's just running them right into the ground because they don't understand their identity. That's what he's after is your identity. You know, you heard of identity theft? Well, that's what the devil's after, your identity, because he doesn't have that identity. You do. And so he's after to make sure you don't find anything out about it. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I believe it's the key. It's the key. You know, put on. There'll be times in your life when you're going to have to put on. There's time, been times in my life when, boy, I didn't know what I was going to do. Like how one of my, uh, my spiritual father, uh, one of his dad's uh, guys that he ministered with, whenever he needed some money for his church, he said he just danced the money. What was he doing? Putting on. Amen. So you know what? I grabbed a hold of him. My wife and I going to need some money when the situation's bad. You know what? I just stepped out of myself and I'll just be in my room and just start, just start dancing around the room. And right in the middle of me dancing around the room, the Lord will speak to me and show me something and show me something to do. And I, I'm telling you, I've literally watched the money come in. I just decided to put on. You know, I believe the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. If he's my shepherd, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And everything that and if the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, then it belongs to me. So I just call that money in now in Jesus' name. I'll just begin to dance and thank the Lord. I believe that I receive this mine now. Amen. I have it now. Amen. And I begin to I just began to dance the money in. Well, I want to tell you, I'm just giving you an example. A few days later, somebody came and gave us a thousand dollar check. Amen. Praise the Lord. Why? Because I decided, you know what? I'm stepping out of myself and I'm stepping into God. Praise the Lord. I'm just going to put on. I'm going to put on that new man, that new, that new creature that I am in Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't know, but I get excited. Amen. It's great. Amen. I get excited about, about being a new creature in Christ because I know where I came from. I know that old man that I used to be. It says, it, says, it says that those that those that have been forgiven much love much. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's all I can do to contain myself and just run around this church right now. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes, you know, the 20th century uh, says to clothe yourself in that new nature. I mean, put on some clothes. I mean, put on that new nature. Amen. You know, the... the uh, 
the impossibilities of man are swallowed up by the possibilities of God. Amen. When you step out of your self and step into that new man, it's limitless. There's nothing impossible to you. Glory to God. That's for somebody. So you put on. What do you do? You acknowledge every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. You begin to speak everything that you, everything you are in Christ on a daily basis. You know, I confess those scriptures all the time. I confess them every day in my life. I remind myself of who I am in Christ. Amen. Every day I remind myself who I am and what I have in Christ. Everything that God has created me to be and everything He's created me to do. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Because the more you stay hooked up with that confession, because your identity is, is tagged to, is, in, is in connection and tagged to your identical confession. And you'll never fulfill your destiny apart from your identity. Because your destiny is attached to your identity. Amen. And your, your destiny is in Him. Right. In Ephesians, he talks about predestination. He's talking about you have a prearranged destiny. Right. Not only to go to heaven, but you have a prearranged destiny right now. That's exactly right. And it's found in Him. God's plan and God's purposes and His pursuits are in Christ. Right in the middle of me confessing of who I am in Christ, confessing, I, I, I've been confessing, God began to speak to me and He's show me, He's show me part of the plan. Show me that one more step of the plan. When I'm, as I'm acknowledging every good thing, God's plan and purpose will come forth. You know, he talks about we have the mind of Christ. Well, we don't always think like Christ right here. But it says we have the mind of Christ. Where at? Right here in your spirit. You have the mind of Christ. Well, how do you ask this? I like to say the mind of Christ is actually God's plan and purpose for your life. We have the mind of Christ right here. But you need to know something personal for your life. I mean, you know, it's, it starts right here. But there's not a book written to both. I mean, there is, but all the books, you know, God's speaking to you, but there's no book called, Bodhi, this is what I want you to do. Here's direction. Here's my plan, my purpose for your life. No. But it's in his mind, and he wants you to know. And it all begins right there, as he opens up your heart and he begins to speak to you about his plan and purpose for your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Right in the middle of you reading the word, God's going to speak to you something specific for you personally. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. As you're spending time in prayer, God will get to speak to you. And you'll know His voice. Why? Because you've been staying in tune with His Word. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. So we put on the new man. The new person that's been made like God. Listen to this. Discover new ways of expressing your new, unique personhood in Christ. Ways which are in harmony with who you really are. <laughs> that may be called for you to step out of the box a little bit. Drop. That's right. Praise the Lord. Come on. Step on out. Because God's not in a box not unless you put him in one. Drop. But listen to what it says here. Discover new ways of expressing your new, unique personhood. And the Holy Spirit will come and He'll show you ways to express that, that new nature, to re express that new man. Glory to God. Go with me to Colossians. Verses 
says, Lie not one to, another, one to another, see you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. He's talking about put on again. Put on. The more that you put on this new man, the memories of that old man and thoughts that come, the more that you put on the new man, the memories of that old life and the old things and, and, and thoughts that come, the more that you put on the new man, the more those get put on the foot. Because as you're putting on the new man, you're stripping off the old. You're stripping off the old. Because but just because you got saved and you became the righteousness of God in Christ, that doesn't mean that you don't still going to have a memory of the things of, of your past life up here. Or you don't have thoughts come to your mind. Wrong thoughts, old habits, attitudes, and controlling influences that were still there, even after you got saved, that were still there, that were still trying to control you. The more that you put on that new man, you begin to tell yourself. I like to say David, you know, David, all through the Psalms, David talked to himself. Those Psalms are David encouraging himself. You need to encourage yourself in the Lord. Yeah. Because when you begin to encourage yourself in the Lord, you're putting on the new man. In Ephesians chapter 5, it says, Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord. You ought to take the scriptures out when you're by yourself. If you can't sing very good, just do it by yourself. And start singing those scriptures. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> singing those scriptures. Praise the Lord. You start singing and putting on the new man by making melody in your heart. Encouraging yourself in the Lord. You know, we need to, we, we need to daily encourage ourselves in the Lord. Because I'm telling you, a lot of people are not going to encourage you. Your best encourager is yourself. Let me say that one more time. Your best encourager is yourself. Amen. David, all through the Psalms, what was he doing? He was putting on. He was encouraging himself in the Lord. My God is a good God. My God is a God of overflow. But I mean, I'm just that's what he was doing. He was encouraging himself. In the midst of, you notice all through there, all through the Psalms, if you read the Psalms, David was in some kind of test or trial a lot of the time. <laughs> and I'm telling you, if you don't, if you can't encourage yourself, you're just going to go, you'll just go. But you can begin to encourage yourself. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Begin to encourage yourself. I thank you, Father, that in Christ I have been redeemed. Amen. I'm telling you, when you can be really down, and if you'll start encouraging yourself with passages of Scripture like that, I want to tell you something. That will begin to lift. It'll begin to lift. I'm giving you some practical things to apply to your life, to apply in every situation. If you're having uh, trouble with finances, I'm just giving you another example. If you're having trouble with finances, Get the word out. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Go back into Genesis and begin to read where it says that after man was, after he made man out of the dust of the earth and he breathed life into him, then he said Every, everything's here. And there was a river that flowed through the garden and then it broke off into four rivers. And one of those rivers led, led right to the gold. Go back and read those scriptures and say, Father, I thank you that, that, that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, that everything here, you put here for a reason. And the gold and the silver, another passage says, the gold and the silver are mine. Well, if they're his, then you're a joint heir with Jesus Christ and an heir of God, then it belongs to you. Mm -hmm. Get out and encourage yourself. The blessing of the <clears throat> Lord maketh me rich. I am rich and I'm rich in every area of my life. Right. Amen. Yeah. One day I was driving down the road and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, because I was, as a matter of fact, working with Roger, 
And, uh, you know, I was, I just needed some finance to start coming in. I needed breakthroughs. And the Holy Spirit said, he said, you've been saying the wrong things. He said, say this. He said, say your pockets are full and you've got plenty, even when you don't have anything in them. So I began to say, my pockets are full and i got plenty. Glory to God in the earth is the Lord and the fullest thereof. And the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want and I do not lack for opportunity and I never lack for money. Amen. I began to say it. What was I doing? I was putting on. And it started becoming real right here. And what happens is, as your believer, your expectation gets turned up. It's turned up a notch. Because when you begin to speak and you begin to put on and use your mouth, you're releasing the flow, the anointing. You're releasing everything that God has for you. You're releasing it out of your mouth. You're releasing it into the atmosphere. Praise the Lord. You can walk right into the middle of an atmosphere of depression and change the atmosphere with the Word of God. Amen. You can change the atmosphere right here. In your mind with the Word of God. Because this is where the battle is. It's right here. But this right here can change your mind. It can literally change. You know, it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Well, when you take the Word of God and you begin to speak it out in faith, that anointing can literally destroy any kind of yoke going on in your mind, your will, your emotions, in your body, the anointing of God. So you put on the new man. First 10 says, And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Praise the Lord. New beginnings, a new time. This is a new day and a new time. It's a time of, of applying applying the applications of who we are in Christ to our life. It says that in Colossians, let's go there, let's, let me, let's read uh, Colossians chapter 2, just back up a page, or maybe on the same page. Chapter 2, verse 3. It says, in whom, there's another one of those in Christ scriptures. It says, in whom? Now, you ought to underline those. You ought to go through your Bible and underline it. Every word says, in whom? In Him. In Christ. Through Him. You know, it said we can do all things through Christ. You ought to underline that in your Bible. Those are the scriptures you ought to meditate on. Praise the Lord. Even if you just take ten of them, of who you are in Christ every day, and begin to confess them out of your mouth, because that's part of the meditation. You, you take the words and put them in your mouth, and just think about them, and say them. Take 10 of them. There's 130 of them. But you can start out with 10. Amen. Amen. Come on. <laughs> Come on with it. Before you know it, you'll have those 10 work, and you'll be your 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 thought life, your mind, you'll be you'll be thinking different. Amen. It says that in whom are hid, what? Well, in Christ are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. God is not hiding wisdom and knowledge from you. He's hid it in you. Because if you're in Him, He's in you. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, God is not hidden wisdom from you. He's hidden wisdom in you. The wisdom of God is on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. If Christ is in you, Christ is the wisdom of God. Amen. So therefore, the wisdom of God is on the inside of you. Amen. You can say, thank you, Lord, that even, listen to me, even when you don't know what to do, this is when you say, by faith, I know what to do, I know how to do it, and I know when to do it in every situation. Every situation. 
I thank you, Lord, that I have wisdom and I know that I have wisdom in this situation, whatever it is, that your wisdom is on the inside of me. You know, when it says in James to ask if you need wisdom, you get to looking that word up, it's just to draw from. To draw is wisdom. Father, I thank you that you have all wisdom. Inside of me, and I thank you for it in Jesus' name. I have wisdom in this situation. What are you saying? You're saying words of faith. Amen. You're saying words of faith that you believe in Him. I, wisdom is in me, knowledge is in me, because Christ is in me. Praise the Lord. I'm trying to give you some practical, practical things that you can apply to your daily life. Start out with 10 in whom in Him scriptures. They're all through there. They're all through there here in the epistles, in Ephesians, in Colossians, Philippians. Let that be part of your daily meditation and study time. You need freedom in your mind, freedom in your body. Begin to meditate on these scriptures. Put them in your mouth. Begin to begin to say them out of your mouth. Acknowledge this. Hey, this is who I am. Acknowledge every good thing says, and finally, acknowledging that your faith, you want your faith to become effective? It becomes effective by acknowledging every good thing which is in you in Christ. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us, prepared for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having a high priest even, uh, uh, over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promise. That word profession there is, and when you look it up in the Greek, it is confession. says, let us hold fast to our confession. Well, if you're holding fast to something, what are you doing? You're, you're, you've got it there before you all the time. Let us hold fast to the profession or the confession of our what? Of our faith. What is the confession of our faith? I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. In Amen. Him I have Come redemption on, through Come His on. blood, yes. the forgiveness yes. of sins, Come on. according to the riches of His grace. Yes. What are you doing? You're holding fast to your confession. Come on. Come on. You're holding fast to your confession of faith. That's your faith. You're confessing, this is my faith. This is my faith. I'm holding fast to my confession. In this context right here, that profession, it's, it's your confession, but he's, he's saying, be a professional confessor. Amen. 
You know, be a professional at your confession. Keep your confession always, always before you. It's one thing for me to hear it coming out of my mouth that I'm telling you you're a new creature in Christ, but it's more real to you when it's coming out of your mouth. It's one thing for me to, to say, tell you that, but it's another thing when you begin to tell yourself that I'm a new creature in Christ, that I am the healed of the Lord. It's another thing when you begin to tell yourself that because it becomes more real to you because it's coming out of your mouth. Before you know it, your faith begins to rise and you're like, my gosh, you're amazing. Thank you, Lord. I am a new creature in Christ. It'll start becoming a... One day you'll wake up and you'll be like, my gosh, I'm a new creature in Christ. I'm telling you, when it hit me, you know, it hit me, I'm just about, I'm just like, oh, Lord, my God, this changes everything. Because when it really hits you, the, the realities of Christ in you, when it begins to really hit you, you're going to wake up one day and you're going to be like, my gosh, Lord, I've been missing out. <laughs> I've been missing out because there's a flood. There's a flood coming. It's the flood of the Amen. Spirit. I've been missing out. Amen. You'll wake up and it looks like a light bulb that'll come on because it says the entrance of thy word giveth light. Boy, when light comes, that's when I was praying earlier, the spirit of wisdom and revelation would come, that you would be illuminated, enlightened to the hope to which you've been called to and to what are the riches of the glory of Christ's inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of God's power towards you who believe. Amen. Oh, yeah. God wants you to really see that. He wants you to see things from the way that He sees things. That's right. He wants you to know His ways. Lord. So hold fast to your what? Your confession. Acknowledge every day every good thing which is in you in Christ. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to encourage everybody to come back tomorrow night because the pastor will be preaching tomorrow night. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I know it's going to be good. It's going to be the last night of the revival this time. Sure, we're going to have other things coming up. I know you've already got some things scheduled. We're probably going to do some other things. Uh, I don't know. I'll pray and find out from the Lord. We'll probably do some more meetings like this. Praise the Lord. It's all come to be encouraged in the Lord. Be strengthened by the Word and by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. What's it come up, John? I, uh, I want to give an opportunity tonight. If, if there's those that are in here that have never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, as their, as their Redeemer, and not only that, if you've never received Him really as your healer, because you, He's your healer too. A lot of the times we, we believe God that Jesus is our Lord and He's our Savior, but we haven't ever really seen Him as our healer. The Lord. Well, Jesus is your healer also. You need healing. You need refreshing. You know your body. You just feel. You just need strength, spiritually, spiritual strength. We give an opportunity for you tonight to maybe come out and we'll pray. But if you never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, to those that are be watching over the internet, to those that are here, if you never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that's the key. That's the that's the beginning point. That's the new birth. No man is without excuse. Every man, every man was born into this world into sin. But Jesus came and He paid it all. He, he paid the price for that. He took the sin problem out of the way so that you could receive His life. Praise the Lord. So if there's anybody in here tonight, if there's anybody on, 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 that's going to be watching, I'd like to leave those that are watching. If you may be here tonight, you just don't want, you don't want to come up. I encourage you. Right where you are, to just say this prayer with me. Say, God, I believe that Jesus died for me. That He took the penalty of sin that was my sin, that was my penalty, and took it upon Himself. 
God, I believe that you raised him from the dead so that I can receive new life and the forgiveness of sin. I receive that forgiveness now. And I receive that new life. By faith, I receive and I confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. If you made that confession of faith today, praise the Lord, you're born again. You just became a new creature. It's a two new time. It's a new beginning. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Father, I just thank you. I, I thank you, Father, for what you're doing here yes. tonight in the hearts of each and every person here tonight. Glory to God. I thank you, Father, for what you the, the future of this church, the future the things that you that you're doing here at, at this church, God's will community church. give you all the glory and all the praise tonight. I just believe that wisdom and revelation was in heart to, to the hearts of the men and women here tonight, Father. Your children, I thank you for it. Glory to God. If there's anybody that just needs to come, come up here to the benches, the altar benches, seats, and just need to pray. If there's anyone you just need to pray about, the altar's open. The altar's open for you to come. There's an altar over right over here. You can come and pray. They just want to come and pray. They need to just you and God. Just get you and God. And it's open. It's open for you. I'm going to have Johnny then continue playing the music. The altar's open. You can just come and pray. Make a connection with God. Praise the Lord. It's open.